Welcome back to the Classic Wines Minute, brought to you by ClassicWines.com. I'm Brian Friedman, and again, we're here at Old Original Bookbinders on 1st and Walnut Street in Philadelphia. Beautiful historic place, unbelievable seafood, definitely want to check it out. Uh, so, for today's food and wine pairing, we're going to be working with the last Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, you probably recognize the label uh, from the last tasting that we did here. Uh, this one, uh, as we explained in that episode, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, this one is very minerally, rocky flavored uh, Sauvignon Blanc. You're going to get less of that fruit. Uh, you're going to get less of that lushness and mouthfeel. Because of that, it's going to be absolutely perfect uh, with a seafood platter like this. So today we're going to see how the wine actually changes based upon what we're going to be tasting it with. So again, just a refresher. Great acid on the nose. You really do smell that mineral quality. Um, again, as opposed to some of those other Sauvignon Blancs, much less tropical fruit, much less of that richness. And that's actually going to help us when it comes to pairing with the food because it's not going to overpower the shellfish. So, first thing we're going to actually try here is one of these Kumamoto oysters. Uh, this is a classic pairing for a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc uh, because there is going to be a certain brininess to the oysters and there's also going to be a certain amount of sweetness to them. And what that should do is actually bring out other characteristics in this wine that we weren't tasting before. So let's see how it goes. Uh, my producer was just telling me that this is an aphrodisiac, so if I start doing funny things with my eyebrows, don't pay attention to it. Mm. Well, it's a great oyster. It's mid-November. I mean, this is really, we're getting into the heart of oyster season here. Amazing. The wine has completely changed its character because of what's going on with this oyster. That mineral quality is much more assured, um, and the fruit, while softened, almost seems more prevalent, probably because it's working in juxtaposition to that, that brininess and that sweetness of the oysters here. Now, what I've been curious about the whole time staring at this uh, are these jumbo shrimp, because the shrimp have a very different flavor profile than these oysters will. And again, these are already dipped in a little bit of cocktail sauce, so I'm wondering how great that pairing's gonna be with it. But again, that horseradish in cocktail sauce could be absolutely spectacular with this wine. This is why do you come, you come to a place like Bookbinders. It's spectacular shrimp. You can't make this stuff at home. totally different wine when you taste it with the jumbo shrimp. There's almost some sort of spice that I'm finding in the wine all of a sudden, and it still works beautifully. It just tastes completely different than the way it did with those oysters. My mother would yell at me for eating with my hands, but when they're as big as chicken wings, you do whatever you like. I think the important lesson today is that a wine like this, which is a little more austere, and that has a little more acid to it, and a little more of a mineral and stone type character, it'll actually pair better with food, because it's not going to overpower it. And the great thing about it is it turns into a bit of a chameleon, and you really get two very different wine experiences, even though it's the same bottle. So remember, always experiment with your wines, always be willing to think and drink outside the box, and always listen to the experts at the restaurant, because hopefully, like they do here, they know their wines and their food better than you do. Until next time, I'm Brian Friedman. This has been the Classic Wines Minute. Cheers.